and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn and this is Thopter Tribal. Last week, I built an Izzet Artifacts deck, and in the middle of testing, I came to two or three other deck lists to run with, and this is the one that I thought was worth mentioning. As always, this is rotation proof, but before I get into the video, hit that like button and subscribe to MTGO Traders for more content like this in the future. All right, let's go. Starting at zero, yes, zero mana slot, we have four Ornithopter. The Ornithopter is here for multiple reasons. While being a great free play, it gives us more play with Improvise as well as an early blocker. Play this with a Metallic Mimic, it's a free 1-3 flyer which isn't bad at all. At the 1 mana slot we have 4 Hope of Jiropur. A 1-1 one, one flyer isn't that great, but its ability is something worth noting. It locks down your opponent's non-creature spells for a full turn if it gets in for a point. That's shutting down early game removal for a turn, a turn with Aether or other ramp spells, as well as other spells that make their first few turns so crucial for an opponent. This turn 1 play could also come down later as a turn 3-2-2 two, two flyer as well thanks to the Mimic. Just overall, a great card. Moving up to the 2 mana slot, we have the Tribal Maker Metallic Mimic, a great way to make our Thopters 2-2 and higher. The Mimic provides terrific momentum moving forward as well as giving us improvised tappers. Moving up to the 3 mana slot, we have 4 Whirler Virtuoso and 2 PNLR. These are the primary Thopter producers of our deck. The Virtuoso being a great way to make multiple Thopters if we have Saheli Ryan making copies to give us more energy, and PNLR helps us burn mana into a Thopter in order to get in for more damage as well as turn off a blocker for a turn, if we're struggling with that as well. But careful, only 2 here thanks to the legendary rule. It sucks drawing multiple of Pia if you can't handle it. But she's also a great copy target for Saheeli too since we get a Thopter out of the deal as well. Coming up to the 4 mana slot we have 2 Snare Thopter. A Flying Haster Thopter for 4 mana isn't great, but a 4-3 Flying Haster is much, much better. Being able to trade with a Glory Bring when we can is awesome, and if not, getting in for 1 fifth of our opponent's life total is great too. Lastly, at the top of our curve we have 4 Maverick Thopterist. Creating 2 Thopters as well as a 2-2 body for a possible 2 mana is awesome, and one of the cards that helps us swing a game in our favor. Again, Flying Damage is much more efficient at getting in, and making a board of 2-2 flyers thanks to the Mimic is that much better. But that's it for creatures, 20 in total. Can you guess the next card? If you guessed the Healy Rai, you'd be right. Creating copies of Maverick Thopterus, Whirler Virtuoso, and PNLR gives us more Thopters, and if we need to set up for a great play, copying a Mimic and then playing a Thopterist creates a possible 8 damage spread across 3 creatures. Also of course, hitting our ultimate gives us the ability to play our Thopters and Mimics to widen our board site or go wide for an Alpha Strike for a win. Moving on to spells, we've got 2 Shock, 4 Metallic Rebuke, and 2 Reverse Engine. Shock helps us ping a creature for a trade or removal, as well as hit a Planeswalker. Harness Lightning was here first for the Whirler Energy Synergy, but hitting a Planeswalker was way more necessary for me as a Chandra or Gideon could shut down a strategy quickly enough that we'd lose a match. Metallic Rebuke and Reverse Engineer are also our improvised tempo. Countering spells that are game enders and drawing cards for tempo is both important and necessary for us big time. But that's it for the main board, let's go over lands. We've got 4 Spire Bluff Canal, 1 Inventor's Fair, 1 Scavenger Grounds, 9 Island, and 9 Mountain. A fairly even mana base even if we're leaning a bit more towards blue. Of course, Inventor's Fair gives us passive life gain, and Scavenger Ground removes a God Pharaoh's Gift strategy, so they're both must-includes. But let's say our game one didn't go too well. Let's go over the sideboard I put together for us. Two Sweltering Sun to try and combat another heavy board state deck. Remember, our board state can get wide fast, so this is okay. Two Chandra's Defeat to handle a Glorybringer or Chandra Planeswalker. Two Negate for removal protection or Planeswalkers. Three Abrade to handle other artifact strategies. Two Essence Scatter to handle creature heavy decks. Two Bastion Inventor to combat heavy removal decks. And two Aether Meltdown to take a creature down to size. And that is the full 75. On MPGO Traders it's coming to a decent 65 tickets. Not too bad for a rotation proof deck. But let me know what you think. Again, this is rotation proof. Exelon is on its way soon, so I'm making decks that don't include anything from Eldritch Moon back. As always, like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.